Hello everyone and welcome to another Warcraft 3 replay commentary. Today we're going to watch a game which was played in May of 2005 as part of the Acon 5 China. So it's obviously between two Chinese players, a Night Elf against Undead matchup on uh, Twisted Meadows and spawning in the bottom right corner is Suho, the Chinese Night Elf player. Arguably China's best Night Elf. I guess there's an argument to be made for Sai as well. But other than that, you know, China was obviously never known for its abundance of uh, great Night Elf players. Uh, Suho actually became known playing for Yolini and left his first impression at Akon 4. Of course, the predecessor of Akon 5, where he ended up on rank 4. Not in the Chinese tournament, but in the international uh, grand final if you will then in april of 2005 uh, suho together with the other uh, yolini players became a founding member of world elite and he stayed there all the way until the end of his warcraft 3 career which was uh, in late 2010 and um, he his biggest successes i mean at this time, you know, in 2005, he wasn't really at the top of his game yet. Demon Hunter first, by the way, for him, and this late in-base engine of war that we've seen so often by the Night Elf players back at the time this game was played in. Uh, when he reached his peak, Suho was definitely not considered a favorite in the top tournaments, but he was always able to beat every player in the world on a good day. Um, his biggest successes were the third rank in the Make Games Colorful 2008 and his victory in the um, G League Season 3 in 2008, which was, you know, packed with a lot of top players like Sky, uh, Ted, Fly, Czech, etc. And he took it rather surprisingly for many uh, people. And his opponent is Shiami, um, another Chinese player and undead who you might also know as G-Star, kinda used two aliases. Going for a good build order here with a Dreadlord first, a little bit of a delayed Dreadlord. As you can see, the Demon Hunt is already out. Uh, Shiami okay. is putting more um, emphasis on building as many goos as possible early on. Uh, Shiami, he played for uh, QCH and for Colorful and he for a while was one of the best Chinese players actually. Um, he even was invited to the Stars War 2 as part of uh, Team China so the committee apparently considered him to be in, in the top 5 of the Chinese uh, players. But uh, you know other than that he didn't really participate in too many international tournaments. Only a couple of Chinese ones and never really uh, won anything significant. And he quit Warcraft 3 in uh, the fall of 2007. So Demon Hunt is going to be aggressive here immediately. Dreadlord is hiding in the very back of the base here. Maybe he doesn't want to reveal him yet, but no, the Demon Hunter's vision range is way too high. So he saw him already <laughs> and uh, he proves that by clicking on him. So right now uh, the Chig is up, Dreadlord is leaving the base, this has already been crept. Maybe he can use the Rod of Necromancy here for the first time, which is exactly what he's doing. Uh, Demon Hunter wants to stay close by, that seems pretty risky tech-wise. Tech nice not game. started yet for Suho, whereas uh, Shiami is already doing his tech and now the Demon Hunter's got a little bit overly aggressive and he's gonna pay for that immediately with either his life or a Town Portal. The Wisp is coming in, I think, is no, no, this run is still closed. And therefore, Town Portal is coming in. Should it, I'm wondering if that was worth it. Maybe should have just let the Demon Hunter die. I mean, I guess there's an upside and a downside to it. Uh, the Moon Shoes is gone right now, but he's got five archers out already. A sixth one coming. And without the Unholy Aura and the Coils, um, there is no way in hell that out of one crypt with the lone, with, uh, with the Dreadlord and the Ghouls, um, Suho could be in trouble against uh, good pressure right now so it's no big deal that the moon wells are empty then again the, the early dreadlord which uh, with which he's not expanding at least at the moment by the way no second crypt for now it should be coming any second if it's gargoyles um, with that early dreadlord obviously he wants to creep as efficiently as possible and therefore having the demon hunter dead for a while would easily secure this dreadlord the level say 2.8 or so 
And against a level one and a half demon hunter, that's nothing Suho wants to have happen. So right now it's six ghouls on the field together with a dreadlord against six archers. So once again, without the unholy aura, without the coil, there's no way in hell that the undead can take this engagement right now. So he's just heading back towards his own base, maybe giving Suho a bit of time to catch up XP-wise right now. As Suho is pulling back, it looks like he's gonna wanna continue creeping. Um, Hunters are coming, tech has started for the night elf in the meantime as well, but like... 60% done, graveyard still in production, and no second crypt, so I guess it's official, we're not gonna see uh, gargoyles. In this match, Dreadlord is uh, gonna keep track of the Night of actually, I, w I was thinking he'd probably just fall back and creep something on his own, because he cannot really achieve anything in this engagement, I think. Even if he gets us around, he's just gonna lose like all his ghouls <laughs> against this number of archers. Also pretty nice by Suho that he's keeping, the, keeping this wisp around, um, maybe just in order to detonate himself out of a surround, to get rid of a couple of skeletons, or to, you know, dispel sleep immediately as he cannot uh, attack with the archers immediately. But uh, it seems like Shiami's got the right senses here, falling back as Suho is hiding this archer in front of the rest of this uh, null overseer camp. Panda second for him. Uh, Death Knight second and a very quick tier 3 tech for the undead. No resources to get anything else at the moment <laughs> since, ironically, he's lacking lumber. And Suho is not getting anything as well. Just getting more wisps. Demon Hunter is now going in for some scouting. The panda's taking this very risky creep camp. Uh, wind of the Wind for him. Of course, different item drops uh, than they there are nowadays at the Goblin Merchant. Oh, that's nice. He, uh... Locked the Demon Hunter in, the Demon Hunter in here, but I guess the main purpose of this Demon Hunter was not to uh, do any significant damage to uh, the Undead, but to scout and to, wow, oh yeah, level up, just saves him, to scout and to make sure that the Undead army is not, or was not heading towards this creep camp, because this could have ended horribly for Suho, but... You know, knowing that from here previously, the undead went towards the left-hand side, and seeing that the undead army isn't in here in the base and heading out, basically the only place he could have been was here or here. And this one's even been scouted, and <laughs> I was just wondering if the wisp was going to survive that, and the answer is clearly no. Uh, so I guess just by um, putting two and two together, so should have known that Chiami was creeping here, and right now it looks like Chiami slipped through Suho's, uh, you know, Steam Hunter who scouted down here, and I think he should be able to creep this uncontestedly as the Night Elf shouldn't know where he's at at the moment. Double Ancient Floor coming as well as a shop, no tier three yet. Okay, never mind. He's going tier three, so it's no mass rights or anything like that, which makes sense because. Um, you know, we don't see the undead going gargoyles or anything like that. And, you know, these days, Night Elves would obviously still go tier 3 against gargoyles, but back in the day, they often didn't. But uh, Suho will pandas continue to creep Team Hunter with the invisibility potion. I guess wanted to arrest, and he was heading towards the, the wrong side of the map at first, but then a panda saw what was going on here. And... Therefore, the Dean Hunter was turning into uh, the proper direction. Panda, very close to level 3 already. He's got some very good creeping down with the Panda. Sleep coming in onto him. The archers waking him up immediately. Demon Hunter's coming in from back as well. Let's see, is there another sleep? The Goose are very far off. The archers turning around again. Oh, he's attacking the Dreadlord. Oh, did he real? Oh, I think he misclicked and now the Panda is surrounded. Demon Hunter still has the Staff of Preservation. Uh, the Staff of uh, Teleportation, though, and he's dropping it in between the Ghouls. Oh wow, this is so unfortunate for Suho. I think he realized too late that he misclicked there. And then to make things even worse, he wanted to drop the staff or pass the staff onto the panda, but he f uh, failed in doing so. You know, another misclick. And then the staff was even, you know, in between the ghouls where he probably couldn't click it. So a very unfortunate uh, Chain of events here from uh, Suho's point of view. Our warriors have engaged the enemy. Now he's just gonna continue creeping. Demon Hunter is probably gonna reach level 3. Whereas at the same time, Shiami 
Yeah, it's gonna continue creeping as well. He's gotten himself a sacrificial skull. No, this is no Ecolite. Alright, maybe he's gonna expand there eventually, but not immediately. Uh, continues creeping. Dreadlord should reach level 4. Death Knight is gonna be close to level 3 already. Demon Hunter found a ring of protection, which is, of course, horrible. <coughs> so he's not selling it, though. Level 3 right now. Panda's coming out. He's soon gonna be level 3 as well. Uh, as we've previously seen. And this, yes, yeah, about one uh, level advantage in total for uh, the Undead. Another Fiend is out. Oh, okay, there's the Ecolite. So yeah, we'll see the expansion soon. Um, Suho heading attack. across the map. Shiami, yeah, paying attention to his hero's experience. Just quickly making sure that he reaches level 3 on the uh, Death Knight. The Dreadlord heading forward a little bit, scouting the Knight of Army coming in. Um, so he doesn't have master yet. He's got reach nation. Does he really want to fight here already? Oh, and we see banshees by uh, Shiami. So that's an interesting uh, strategic decision. Of course, eventually against uh, the bears, they might be great as well as for the anti magic potion, but. Uh, um, Anti-magic shell, but that might not be game deciding. So the first fiend has gone down here. First, uh, two archers have fallen already as well. The archers need to be spread very widely here, which is costing the knight have a lot of damage output. But at the same time, the ghouls are focused pretty heavily. One of them is finally falling right now. The heal ward has been killed, which I think um, Shiami found at the right hand side. Shop panda now level three should probably come in for another breath of fire. The dryads have to reposition. Is Suho gonna get out of there alive. He doesn't have a town pole. Bear gets around it, but staffed immediately by the demon hunter. Demon hunter passing the staff onto the panda. That's pretty smart. Now he can, yeah, he can just let himself get surrounded and staff him. That was kind of one of the moves to do <laughs> back in the day. Uh, right now it's not possible anymore, of course, since you need two staffs to do that. But uh, the way that went, I think it was pretty decent for Shiami, he lost like a fiend and a ghoul, but he killed the majority of the archers. Yeah, two of them are remaining. I think there were like six archers uh, previously. But now Master is finished. Uh, Shiami is gonna get, is he gonna get this in creep spot entirely? He's solo creeping the dreadlord, so he really wants to have the level five apparently. Invo potion and gauntlets of August strength. He does have a town portal. Uh, Panda is coming in from the bottom. Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire. He's got, yeah, he's definitely got a town portal. He had no way in hell he can take that fight. He doesn't. Oh, he actually did have one heal scroll, but still, that would have never been enough. Uh, Ghouls only against um, DH Panda, but Dried Bears aren't gonna cut it. Expansion is, by the way, coming. Uh, very risky here by Shiami, in my opinion. I mean, he's got the Panda killed, but. His army is not ready yet, I feel. The master upgrade is coming right now. He's got only two banshees. He's got a couple of ghouls, one fiend, no orb, two heal scrolls, okay. But if this gets scouted, he just has to cancel it. I don't think he can fight at the moment against uh, the completely well prepared Knight of Army. I guess Suho could need, uh, could use uh, an orb as well as uh, Town Portal and maybe one heal scroll. But that's all he needs, and then he's perfectly fine. 54 supply, by the way, against 58, so slight advantage for uh, the Night Elf. Now the Banshees have definitely been scouted. By the way, he's coming in with the Master. Um, spell Shield found by the uh, Demon Hunter. It looks like one uh, sleep has immediately been blocked. The first of the Archers has fallen. Possession attempt. Let's see, both of the Banshees going down immediately. And now it's, once again, Goose against a completely well tagged Night Elf army, and this is not a fight in which the Undead stands any chance. Heals uh, Crawl has been used, but Town Portal follows immediately. And this was very good for Suho. Town Portal forced both of the Banshees have gone down, which are, of course, the high tech units of the Undead at the moment. And he definitely doesn't want to use the, uh, lose them because they are of great value to him. More Banshees being produced in the meantime. Uh, Shiami, of course, knowing that Suhu is at the top of the map. And Suhu, did he not scout this? It looks like he didn't scout this. If he had scouted this, there would be no reason to head down towards the bottom of the map right now. Tree of Life coming for Suhu as well. In the top left corner, I'm curious when Shiami is going to scout that. Because that's definitely not the uh, position where 
you'd expect a counter expansion ring of protection for the dreadlord as well and again he's creeping the dreadlord solo and the uh, knight fm is coming in from the top he does have a town portal luckily and that means he's gonna get out of there with only losing one fiend as well as the entire mana on his death knight actually he could have called that fiend but didn't do so in time so another fiend has gone down I guess XP wise this is kind of okay still for Shiami. Yeah, he's got a decent XP advantage. That's of course because whenever he was forced to town portal, he kinda always got a bit of XP out of it in return, like this camp or this camp. Except for the fight here, which was I think a little bit over ambitious. Now the expansion has been scouted and we'll see when Suho is gonna decide to attack because I think at the moment the momentum is definitely on his side and if he decides to go up there um, he's going to be you know looking just fine. Three benches out at the moment, anti-magic shell used on those which is very great because you know they take so much damage while trying to use possession that uh, getting rid of the breath of fire damage definitely helps. Panda continues creeping. He's reached level 4 already. Demon Hunter, maybe in the base? Yeah, he's getting two heal potions here. Uh, second staff bat bought as well. No orb yet still <laughs> for either of the players, even though both of them have an expansion or at least an expansion coming. So very creeping heavy, more or less. Suho, of course, being much more aggressive with his creeping, creeping a lot on the opponent's side of the map, which results in the creep camps if you take a look at okay that's bugged unfortunately if we take a look at the minimap the majority of remaining creep camps are on the right hand side of the map which is pretty good for suho but um actually the second red camp is going to go to shiami and as expected he's going for the expansion very quickly this means this creep camp will go to shiami for free and maybe the entire right okay this is gone obviously maybe more or less the entire right hand side of the map which could result in a huge xp advantage for the undead but at the same time this expansion is definitely screwed because there's no necropolis there there's no way in hell he can defend that so yeah we'll see um what did the red camp drop here Mana pendant and he's giving it to the dreadlord so he's gonna want to have a lot of sleeps level 5 on the dreadlord 4 on the death knight the expansion here yeah it's going to be taken down it's even being sold yeah, which i guess makes sense for shiami he's gonna have to produce more is he saving no 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 he's way over 50 supply obviously oh, and he's getting a boneyard so he's <laughs> wow he's really putting emphasis on building just every unconventional unit available to the undeads. So banshees, worms, ghouls, statues, I'm assuming maybe even destroys eventually since he's gonna wanna get rid of at least the rejuvenation, if not the rejuvenation as well as the um, roar. So Shiami continues creeping, fiend and and the uh, shade even are, under are um, making sure that there's no expansion down here i think the dreadlord was just heading down here sees or saw that there was no uh no counter expansion as well didn't he i think he did didn't he no he didn't maybe just a little bit um towards the bottom so the question is when if ever is shiami gonna scout the expansion on the top Because four bench is still plenty of units around. I guess right now Suho would still gladly take a fight yeah, since he's well prepared. Wow, two two upgrades already as well. Um, 62 supply against 68 right now, but seven of that supply is in the boneyard still. Trying to go for the kill on one of the benches, maybe blocking with the DH. Yeah, it looks like he was trying to do that. But at the same time blocking his own ride with one of the bears. Research finished. So um I guess he expected to get the kill on the stride anyway, so that's probably why he uh why he didn't wanna reveal himself. Now casting a reveal here. We've seen the shade here earlier. I'm wondering if the shade was like blocking the expansion or anything like that because why would he use the dust there? 
I mean, I thought the fiend killed the wisp, like here somewhere. If I saw that on the minimap correctly, there was at least uh, one of a dot for Suho on the minimap. So that's like that's the only reason I can see why he would use a dust there because previously the shade was here, and it may have blocked an expansion. Now the shade is with the night elf army, and the undead is there. Worm is out. The heroes, the ghouls are coming out, the benches are coming from the top, the bears are kept in the back. If he gets the possessions properly, then this is going to be great. Duncan, his Breath of Fire actually used on the ghouls instead of the benches. And yeah, he's following it up with a TP immediately. doesn't want to fight against the five benches. And I'm guessing it seems like a reasonable choice. It's 80 supply against 69. So Suho way up supply was, but that could have turned very quickly. So Suho doesn't dare fighting this. He's getting his second expansion up right now. I mean, getting two expansions against No is of course great. But then again, Shiyami's getting his expansion back as well. So Town Portal used by the Night Death. He's rebought it immediately. Heading towards the left-hand side again. Is he Town Portaling? He's gathering his army. Worm is coming in. Benches are coming in. Everything is coming in. Whips are being re no, no, Whips are being pulled, but not to repair, but to detonate, and therefore this means this means he's gonna let the expansion go down. He's gonna rely on this expansion down here, um, and he's probably gonna force another town portal of of Shiami, who's yeah got everything he needs more or less. I mean, it's still gonna be a very very tough fight. He's clicking both of the heroes at the moment. Sees that they are very well equipped with potions, with staffs. No scrolls, which is the only real surprise here. Town Portal coming in. He's waited for the second Frostworm. That's why it took so long to Town Portal. I'm assuming Breath of Fire is coming in. The, the Night Elf is just going for the Black Citadel. I'm assuming he's probably going to get it. The Banshees are coming in right now. Starting to possess the Bears. He's doing more and more damage to the Black Citadel. More and more possession is coming in. Town Portal is coming in as well. One Bear gets overtaken. It's only the one Bear, but the Black Citadel survives as well. So a very close call there. I think... Shiami, even though he held his expansion, he kind of lost the mind game there, I think, because the town portal position ended up being very awkward for him. Because he town portal just behind this concave of dryads. I believe that, you know, if I was the undead, I'd expect the Night Elf to reposition once the TP's coming in. So I guess he wanted to TP, like, right in front of the, uh, right in between the bears, which of course cannot move once they're being possessed. Like, then I guess like possession, uh, possession on the bear, sleep on the panda, and then um, just overtake the bears. But it didn't quite work out that way for Shiyami. He's got one bear at his army at the moment, whereas Suho, of course, still has plenty. Once again, town portal rebought. Very many town portals um, bought by both of the bought and used by both of the players already. Both of them very careful with their fighting positions, or you know their choices of when to engage. Except for one time when uh, Shiami kind of went overboard up here. Okay, Dry doing some scouting. It looks like um, a second expansion game. attempt by uh, the under player. But right now we're seeing another fight. One of the Banshees immediately taken down. Two more of the bears are being possessed. How many of the Banshees are going to survive here? Sleep on the panda. One of the Banshees gets taken down. One of the bears gets overtaken. A very unfortunate position for the Demon Hunter. As Suho had a very hard time positioning himself properly in this fight. Even one more bear could be taken down by the Worms. But it looks like uh, the Undead wants to keep the pressure up onto the uh, Night Elf's main army immediately. Another bear is taking plenty of damage. The Tree of Eternity marching out of uh, the Night Elf base. Not sure how far that one's gonna uh, gonna come. Mana potion as well as anti magic potion used by the panda again. Spell sheet has been triggered. I'm assuming by sleep. And the demon hunter is the target right now. Inward potion used on him. The ghouls are taking another breath of fire and they're going down very very quickly here. Reposition by the under. It looks like one more bear is gonna fall. And for now, Suho can hold this, but he's diving out very, very far. I'm not sure if that's the greatest decision. Demon Hunter's taking a lot of damage. Sleep goes on the panda again, of course. He wants to prevent the staff from being used. The Demon Hunter still has a heal potion, which he needs to use right now. The Dreadlord also is taking plenty of damage. Demon Hunter's taking more and more damage again. Sleep on the panda. He needs to dispel. Or, yeah, now he dispels and casts staff or uses the staff of preservation. Immediately, the bear of Shiami is actually taking a lot of damage. Level 5 on the panda. Uh, Death Knight's pulling back very far here. Wow, what's he doing? Guessing another little misclick, but now he's coming back, back into the fight. The panda has to reposition right now. And uh, yeah, he still has a potion. He still has the Demon Hunter around as well. Mana Born onto uh, 
onto the Death Knight, and therefore he's out of mana for now. This means the uh, Dreadlord is in some serious trouble. He still has a Town Portal, as well as the Invo Potion, though. Demon Hunter, he wants to fight the Death Knight around the corner, I think, but he's pulled back very, very far now. Invo Potion used by the Dreadlord, and therefore the Death Knight can use the Coil aggressively after using the Mana Potion. So a pretty, pretty smart move by Shiami. Who's gotten the kill on Demon Hunter right now? Who's got the Panda very low? There are still two Moon Wells, uh, which uh, contains some Moon Shoes in the back of the Night Elf Army. Moonstone used right now. Uh, money wise, Suho doesn't have enough to rebuild his Demon Hunter for now, but at the same time, no more income for the Undead because two Dryads have been harassing here during all of that. So, yeah, the two worms and um, the remaining undead army are gonna take down this tree of eternity very quickly, which means no more tier 2 or tier 3 items from the shop, only clarities, moonstones, and dust of appearance. For the night elf, it's 59 supply for Suhu, 46 for um, Shiami, who's about to lose his expansion. He's still, he's got one Ecolite remaining, and this one is still running. Not scouted, you know, officially, but I think um, Shiami should. Be aware of that. Panda is coming in again, of course. He's the solo hero for the Night of uh, Dragon Haze, Breath of Fire. Bear being morphed here into Master Shape. He should probably staff it, but doesn't do so in time. The Dreadlord is taking plenty of damage here, but he's been able to pull him back in time. Next target is the Death Knight, actually. I feel like he should probably try and take down the Destroyer and the Frostworms instead of the heroes because they are very, very bulky and tanky against the piercing damage of those drives. There's still a potion on the panda, which he's gonna have to use right now. He's using it just in time before the coil strikes. Now, both of the heroes, the panda as well as the Death Knight, are in trouble. The panda is actually falling level 6 for the Dreadlord, and the Death Knight is getting away with 40 HP. The drives. No, no, he's got the aura. There's no way in hell the Dryads can catch up. Infernal casted by the Dreadlord. And now both of the Night Elf heroes are dead. The Demon Hunter is halfway back, but the Altar is gonna be... Uh, yeah, he's flying through there immediately. He's got nothing to fear at the moment, as all of the Dryads are out of... Um, out of the... Out of the Night Elf... Night Elf space. And, yeah, the Altar is gonna fall. Demon Hunter is not going to be able to... Um, come back out of that one, but immediately out of the tavern. 52 supply for the Night Elf still against 44 for Shiami. I also really like uh, now the expansion has definitely been scouted if it didn't uh, if it hadn't before. Yeah, okay, there's actually the expansion. I was about to say I really like uh, Suho's Wisp placement here. This one, uh, this one on top. He's got one here, so he's he can scout all the possible expansion positions. Level five for the Demon Hunter right now. And yeah, just as I said, it totally pays off. He's prevented his opponent from expanding again. Who of course had more than one Ecolite remaining, but I didn't see those because they weren't idling. But in return, Suho is going to lose his last source of gold income as well. So both of the players, at least for the moment, out of gold income. Suho has got 334 gold with plenty of items on the Demon Hunter. Invisibil invisibility Potion again. <laughs> Shade turns around here immediately to follow the army and he's gonna see the invis potion pretty soon I'm assuming um, So he could Build another tree of life somewhere if he wanted to Is he gonna build another like ninja style expansion here? No, I think he's just repositioning the wisp to make sure he's not missing anything And Shiami He's got the one Ecolite left somewhere. Yeah, he's, it's heading up here. Is he building an expansion? That's the question. If he didn't order it already, then he doesn't have the gold. Maybe he ordered it already. I'm just not seeing it. And the Wisp here, uh, the, yeah, now he even clicked the Demon Hunter, so he definitely knows about the um, invisibility potion. The drives, of course, are very hard to kill at the moment for Shiami because he's only got the heroes and one fiend as well as the infernal of course to deal damage against those but then again the demon hunter might not be as hard to kill but then again he's level 5 and he's got you know invo potion invis potion now one of the worms being focused here being coiled in time there's still mana for another coil of course the demon hunter is gonna have to be very careful when marching inside of the undead army to use um, mana burn because of, you know, uh, frost worms, sleep, coil, etc. 
Okay, Ancient of Lore uprooted and he's selling. Wow, he just sold his spell shield and the invo potion. I guess he did some math because the that's exactly enough gold to get the panda back at the tavern. Uh, getting that one back, staffing him home immediately with the staff of um, teleportation. So he's got both of his heroes back. Panda, Demon Hunter, Mass Riot against Dreadlord, Death Knight, two worms, one, um, uh, one destroyer, one fiend, and the statues. So uh, mana burn onto the Dreadlord again. Demon Hunter's taking a lot of damage. Drunken Haze coming in, Breath of Fire, Infernal stunning both of the heroes and majority of the Dreads sleep onto the Panda, which should be dispelled here actually a lot more quickly than he's doing. Death Knight is gonna get away here for free. Demon Hunter has been staffed, but he's actually being staffed to the Ancients of War because uh, he's got no more main tree, he's got no altar, and I'm guessing the Ancient of War is probably the next building that uh, staff is going to be triggered onto. He's pulling back very, very far here. The panda is being blocked by his own dryad, and he's actually getting the kill on the panda. And that one had a mana potion, he had a staff, and I think a third item. And that one is going to be gone, probably for good, because as previously mentioned, there's no gold income anymore. The dreadlord is the next target here. Dean Hunter still has the invisibility potion, still has the movers to support him. Mana burn onto the dreadlord, and he's forced to use the town pot out. Is the worm gonna fall here? Ah, he's not getting the kill on that one. So, nothing lost by Shiami. Everything is low. Both his heroes, one of the worms. But nothing has died here. Whereas, Suho has lost his panda. Again, and as previously mentioned, no gold income whatsoever. Okay, the Acolyte is back in the base. There's obviously no expansion here. So, uh, yeah. That's not gonna happen. At least for now. Another bunch of skeletons summoned. Pendant of mana dropped here even just to uh, regenerate mana more efficiently with um, the Obsidian Statue. The Steam Hunter also only has the Invis Potion and the Staff of Teleportation. And if I read this properly down here earlier with the dust, then he should be aware of the fact that there are shades. So having only this Invis Potion is super, super risky by Suho, whose Steam Hunter is still far away from level 6. Steam Hunter is kept in the back of uh, the Night Death Army. Dispel gets rid of the sleep immediately. Worm is able to slow both of the Wisps and therefore uh, Detonates are coming in a bit of mana. Burned off of uh, the Dreadlord sleep again onto the Demon Hunter. Dispel again, but now the Worms are in range and he's using the Invis Potion right now, but the Shade is there and this means this Demon Hunter should go down again and Suho still no income, no gold. How is he supposed to get his heroes back? And I guess the answer is just, he can't. He's at 40 supplies still. He's got like 4, 8, 11 dryads. Against this entire undead army. Which is now flying into his main base. Doing some damage to his moon. Well, the dryads are coming in from the left hand side. Worms immediately being repositioned. Uh, Infernal is, I'm assuming, not around, so he probably should be able to cast it anytime soon. First of the Moonwells has gone down. Dryads positioning themselves very carefully in between the Moonwells. The Death Knight is being focused again. Now the Infernal is coming in, stunning a large portion of the Dryad. Let's see if he's gonna get the kill on the first one. Now he's running in with the Dryads. See what he's gonna decide to focus. It looks like it's going to be the destroyer, and look at how much damage these uh, light armed units are taking. Destroyer is going down immediately. The frost worm is the next target. Coil hits it just in time, but yeah, three three upgrades on the drives. Look at how quickly these frost worms are going down. The first one has fallen, the second one is probably gonna get above the forest. Another coil hits him here, and the frost worm is gonna survive. But this means there are only the heroes and the infernal left, as well as the statues, obviously, but they aren't doing uh, too much uh, damage at least. So the next target is going to be the Death Knight as it appears he's trying to slip out to the top. The Dryads are keeping up with him though now turning around towards the bottom. There's no town portal on any of the heroes so this Death Knight is probably screwed. He's trying to escape to the bottom of the Night F base but there's nowhere to go so the Death Knight is going down which leaves the Dreadlord and the two statues as the only units 
of uh, Shiami left on the field as well as the Frostworm of course, but that one is gonna make sure he's staying the hell away from the Dryads. And the Dreadler is actually the next target. The one Dryad escaping to the top, of course he's gonna wanna micro all of his Dryads to their fullest potential to not allow the Infernal to kill any of them, but the Infernal stays at the base. He yeah, he's just going for the Moonwell, he is not chasing after the Dryads, but the Dreadlord is actually in some trouble. He's got the Boots of Speed, Suho is trying to block with one of his Dryads here, another hit onto the Dreadlord, I think. Ah, oh, is he... Is he... No, no, he should be keeping up with the Dryads here, he's taking a lot of time uh, to actually get this Dreadlord down. 22 HP, 13 HP, he's slipping around the corner, now the Night Dev has lost vision, there's 280 gold for... The other, he's getting more, but he's not. Oh my goodness! He didn't sell anything. He was selling a cigarette, but how greedy was that? And now the uh, the dreadlord has fallen as well. Three hundred and seventy gold available at the moment for Shiami, and he's selling another cigarette, and he's getting his dreadlord back right now. So at the moment, it's two statues. And where's the worm? The worm is here above the forest. Two statues and a worm. As well as the Infernal, which is about to run out against a bunch of Dryads. Four, eight, nine Dryads. It's definitely gonna make sure not to lose the Worm. Wisp is <laughs> running away from the Infernal as well. Repairing the Moonwell right now. And against the Dryads, this Worm is not gonna be able to attack the Moonwell. Because then he's gonna become visible over the forest. And then the Dryads are just gonna get rid of him very easily. Then again, he's probably gonna want to win time with this Frostworm because the Dryads are heading across the map and if they are able to snipe the Altar, I think that's exactly what Shiami wants to prevent here with this harassment with the Worm. But look at how much damage she's taking just against one of the 3-3 three, three tech Dryads. He's gotta pull back right now, 38 HP, 34. And yeah, he's survived for now, but he's not gonna be able to win any more time. One Dryad is remaining here inside of the base. Now the Dryad's attacking actually the Crypt instead of the Altar. No, no, he's attacking the Altar right now. Shade is still here. One Dryad is still here as well. <laughs> Moving out with everything, just trying to win some time. The Worm is flying back in. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's losing the Worm. So greedy. Yeah, now everything is coming out. Is he even gonna attack the One Dryad with the statues? He isn't for whatever reason. The one last Echolite has been taken down by the Dryad, so no more repair, at least for a while, but it is enough for the Dreadlord to come out. It would have taken like five more seconds maybe for these Dryads to get rid of the Altar, but they didn't. So the Dreadlord is back. Of course, no mana for the Infernal at the moment. The Altar has gone down. Dreadlord is selling everything. Okay, that's that was only the mana pendant. Now he sells it. Previously he couldn't when he just had to sell it up here to get you know, whatever. A town portal, obviously. <laughs> and it would have been enough gold for him. So some more um, attack by the Dryads, but he's upgrading the two Spirit Towers, and Spirit Towers plus the Slow of the Black Citadel are going to eat up these Dryads. Like, this base is going to be unbreakable for only Dryads, and he's spawning an Infernal here, sending it across the map, and I think Suho... Looking at this vision range, he could have seen it. I'm not sure how far or where those Dryads were standing. So he may have missed the Infernal. And that one, there are only three buildings left for Suho. Keep that in mind. He's got ten gold. He's not going to be able to build a new building. So now the Spirit Towers have finished. The Infernal is reaching the base. And getting rid of the first Moonwell immediately. The Dreadlord doesn't dare going out of his base. The Crypt is gonna fall, but Shiami doesn't need that Crypt anymore. He's got 8 gold, so who cares, right? And the Infernal is gonna get rid of this Moonwell very easily as well. Two hits are required only. And this means this Hunter's Hall is the last building for Suho, who's now heading back across the map with all of his strides. 12 supply for Shiami, which is 6 um, coming from the two statues, 5 from the Dreadlord, and 1 from the Shade here. That's all he's got, so he cannot even sell anything anymore. Well, he could sell the boots and then buy an Ecolite, or build an Ecolite, and then um, sell more buildings with that. So he's gotten rid of the Infernal. This is the last building 
of Suho. He's got still a couple of wisps spread across the map. Still, he's got the wisps everywhere next to the uh, gold mines. But then again, yeah, there's no gold for Xiaomi, who's just sitting in the back of his base right now. And what's the plan here? Okay, Suho is surrounding his own uh, Hunter's Hall. So when the next Infernal is coming in... I'm not really sure. Can he attack that from anywhere? I don't think so. Maybe here? Like here? I'm sh I'm, I think not. Maybe here. But of course, uh, there's a bit of cooldown on the Infernal. Sorry for not exactly knowing how much. Yeah, and he actually sold the boots and now he's getting an Echo Light and selling stuff. Suho, well, saying th something. Re okay, I'm assuming he's asking for regame and uh, wants to end this as a draw. And Xiaomi, you know, he's selling stuff. And this probably means no, so any of you, uh, you know, capable of speaking Chinese um, can maybe give me some information on that but I'm assuming it's like draw question mark and then no <laughs> so another infernal uh, being casted here of course the statues are amazing for Shiami I don't if he hadn't or if he didn't have those with the regular mana regeneration um, things could get a lot more tricky so now the infernal is heading across the map oh we see Suho is trying to reposition, he is trying to, trying to absolutely make sure that nothing can attack the, the Hunter's Hall and we'll see if this is going to work out for him. The Infernal is coming in right now. And yeah, he's not able to attack, he's moving here. Is he, is he gonna be able to attack? That's the question. If not, then he's just gonna kill like this drive because it's stuck anyway. But he's going for the Hunter's Hall. Yeah, he is in range, so next time Suo is gonna have to position uh, his strides a little bit better. I think he could just like close Gap, like, move this right down a little bit, I think. Why why wouldn't you? I think this might work as well. I think this one's more open right now, but I have no idea how close it is. Ecolite now heading up here. Does he build another expansion? <laughs> he might. Okay, and he saw the wisp and he's turned around immediately, so that cost him a bit of gold. Um, and he's going to have to spend his uh, 233 gold now in some other way. Then again, I don't really think that Suo, <laughs> Suo is taking a sweet time building this wall around his Hunter's Hall. Uh, what was I about to say? I'm not sure if Suo can really afford sending a single Dryad here across the map, so even if he sees that expansion, if he sends a Dryad away, then the next Infernal is just gonna come in and um, get some more attack space. So now two destroyers have been moved, so that's minus 200 gold for Shiami, which means this wall is going to be not exactly useful when there are destroyers shooting uh, from up here. Actually, does he want to use the wisps? Okay, looks like he just gave up on building a larger circle around his hunter. So, so now the destroyers are coming in. First target is surprisingly a wisp. There's zero gold remaining for Suho, so he cannot even repair. I guess he repaired. Um, for as long as he could. The Shade, of course, sees everything that Suho is doing. Two destroyers sitting above the forest. The Dreadlord at full mana um, probably waits for the cooldown to be over. And it looks like he's just given up on building the wall here. Moving his Dryad out of his base, the Wisp, maybe to do some more scouting. Dreadlord, is he gonna spawn another, another um, Infernal? That's the big question. Destroyers are once again flying in there from the right-hand side above the forest. It's so unfortunate for the Night Elf that this building is right next to the forest. But then again, if it wasn't, then he could never surround it with all of his dryads. So the destroyers are um, flying away again. He's probably going to get the kill on this wisp here. <clears throat> and yeah, Suho, actually, he's patrolling... Here with the one dryad, and he's gonna see the infernal coming in. And he's got a wisp, wisp patrolling here, so he's always 
capable of seeing when the Infall is coming in. I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, he's gonna try and catch that one on it on its way, so it's not even gonna reach the Hunter's Hall if things go um, according to Suho's plans, but at the same time, the Destroyers are doing more and more damage. 330 HP on the Hunter's Hall. It looks like he... Did he get this around? I think this uh, Infernal is surrounded, yeah. Question is, is this Dryad gonna fall first, or is the Infernal gonna fall first? No, the Dryad is going to survive. The Infernal, of course, is going to be slowed by all of the other Dryads, and therefore, that one's down. The Destroyers are kind of low. Is he putting them back over the Blight? He might be doing just that, which is now scouted by the Wisp, and is he able to catch up to the Destroyers? No, he's flying above the forest. So that's some uh, decent movement here by Shiami with those Destroyers, getting them out alive. Still, um, Suhu is keeping a couple of Dryads, close to uh, the forest just to make sure not to get surprised by those destroyers and as we've seen previously the three three tech dryads they eat up destroyers and worms so uh this infernal didn't do too much didn't even get to the hunter's hall again a wisp is patrolling here there's nothing patrolling here at the moment so he could send the infernal the other way around of course if he knew about that which he doesn't because uh, shiami at the moment has got no vision anywhere here on the map only his main base and the shade which stares at the hunter's hall so yeah he's actually pulled the destroyers back onto the blight because of course um, he wants to make sure to have them regenerate as quickly as possible right now flying back with them on the bottom of the map i'm assuming this is probably not going to be seen dry it's just sitting here yeah, maybe waiting for something. Not really sure. And he didn't see this destroyer, so a couple of hits will be done onto this Hunter's Hall again. But at the same time, I mean, the damage output of mana-less destroyers against fortified armor is very very little and the drides immediately start attacking the destroy which is taking so much damage so the first one already down to about 100 hp the hunter's hall has taken about uh, 80 damage i think now putting the destroyers back to the bottom again the question is can suho do anything to keep this Hunter's Hall alive permanently. Now Dryad is patrolling here again. <laughs> and the Infernal is taking a huge detour. Uh, he knows about the scout here apparently. Might be thinking there's a scout here or you know here as well. So he went around the top, but now he's turning around, uh, going through the middle, and he's going to be seen again here by the Dryads. So a couple of Dryads already making their way towards the Infernal. <laughs> the Infernal is turning around immediately. Wisp here could actually be taken down, <laughs> dispelling him in time. So um, Suho not willing to give any free XP to this Dreadlord anymore, but uh, yeah, he's sort of closing in on level 7, but I'm afraid. Uh, that one wisp wouldn't have made the difference and he doesn't dare moving across the map with all of his dryads so the infernal is just pulling one of the dryads away which isn't too big of a deal and uh, imagine if suo fell for this then the next infernal could just march in here and kill everything but he's keeping the dryads close he still has to scout here dreadlord is still just sitting in his own base not really knowing what he's supposed to do now the infernal again is uh, getting closer to the Hunter's Hall, <laughs> but the Dryads are going to get rid of that one, apparently. The duration's already halfway over, so he's... I mean, he can just make use of it as much as possible because, you know, there's no free XP to give away to Suho because he didn't have a hero for, like, 10 minutes by now. So, yeah, the Infernal just gets taken down by all of those Dryads. Of course, thanks to the slow, it's very easy for Suho to micro all of these Dryads into safety and not to lose any of them. If somehow, of course, he can get these destroyers killed, um, things are going to look much better for Suho. So if Shiami screw screws up somehow. Oh, 
Again, wisp scouting here, dried scouting here. Rest of the dryads ready to move in any direction. Suho might be asking for draw again. <laughs> but then again, as an undead, do you really want to give a draw to a night elf player who's sitting or who's got one hunter's hole with 238 uh, HP? Whereas there's no way in hell that you're gonna lose unless uh, you know you you make a big mistake. So dreadlord again at full HP. Of course, um, there might still be cooldown on the infernal, and now he's actually moving out. With a Dreadlord, as it seems, the Destroyer is also moving out of the base. The, oh, that's not very close to the bottom. Is the Wisp going to see them? Yeah, the Wisp sees the Destroyers. Uh, the Dreadlord is also being seen by the Wisps. The Dryads are heading there now, and is he catching them on the way? I think one of the Destroyers is definitely going to fall. Yeah, one of the Destroyers is down. The second one is getting above the forest, so minus five supply. But at the same time, Infernal casted by the Undead. And the Dreadlord with the Infernal is running through, and I think he missed. he didn't see this. Somehow he missed it, with even though he had the Wisp there. And now the Infernal, together with the Dreadlord, are at the Hunter's Hall. And there is no way that Suho, that Suho can keep that one alive any longer. So Shiami takes the game here. Um, a game which certainly had its 2005-ish uh, mistakes. I guess the most glaring one. Uh, being that Suho wasn't able to keep his heroes alive and I think he approached the fights incorrectly against the two Frostworms and the Destroyer. He should have just uh, attacked them with all of his Dryads instead of uh, the heroes, which uh, Shiami was able to get out alive over and over and over again. Whereas, uh, you know, if the Dryads had attacked the Worms, I think, you know, there wouldn't have been any slow anymore because Frostworms were dead and maybe one of the heroes would have even reached level 6, which would have been great for Suho, but he didn't do so. I guess towards the end it dragged on a little bit, but, uh, you know, how often can you, say, can you say that an undead won because he, you know, base, uh, he, he killed the base of his opponents by sending Infernals across the map over and over again. So I think definitely a very interesting watch, also a game that got sort of closer to a tie than most other games and um, in this one Suho yeah unfortunately didn't get his wish granted which of course was the wish of um, of a regame so I hope you guys enjoyed this one as always uh, if you did so then subscribe and give a comment and give a thumbs up uh, of course there's always the donate button on the bottom in uh, the description which you can use if you wanna you know get rid of some money and don't know who to give it to uh, I'm always happy to take it but of course you don't have to and uh, I guess that's all there is to say uh, I see you soon bye